Okay, so first thing for today is going to be uh, finishing up the loading of data from files rather than, because right now the camera, the render triangle, the render mesh are being created manually, hard coded in the application. I want to change that to actually have the option of these items being pulled in from the file instead. Now, last time I had to uh, rework the camera to make it compatible with that system. So at this point, it comes down to actually putting in that into into actually using it. So uh, first part, let's copy the output of these up into here. The data A for and then state paste those three. We need to change the state data from the um, number one to start at number four. Camera, negative five, this stuff, okay. This stuff, okay. We'll want to change this to be like, you know, it starts at zero and it starts at six up above or four realistically. I mean, that's the same as the hard coded stuff. And then we will quite simply do this. Now I'm sure there's something that's going to break from this. But I'm not sure what. The camera, view X and view Y, I presume are going to be breaking here. But that's because I don't really have a good way of connecting a camera with the output window yet. Or to like the display surface, I should say. But that'll be something that comes along in due time. So the first thing I probably want to do is like go to camera processing or realistically it's going to go this, this is going to break because, you know, at this point, this perspective has a view X and view Y of complete and utter garbage. Yeah. So what I'm going to do for the moment in the main loop is... Rebuilding swap chains is something that happens on the very first round, right? Very first frame. I'm hoping. I'm really, really hoping. Okay, just to be sure. The generation of position descriptors Camera, cam camera system should be. Mm -hmm. Down here, it's done as part of the of the Vulcan render loop, so I don't have to worry about it quite at that point. Um, we don't need this. Okay, what we can actually do, camera. System. We can move this around. Way up to where it was originally. To be like part of the system processing. data and then the 
this is a render call which I need to still export out of here eventually but for the moment what I can do okay now going back to my earlier thing first of all I need to know first time I'm through I have to build swap chains if I'm displaying something if I'm not even displaying something that actually okay no for the moment yes cameras are going to be tied to output window it's the first time through hit this and we've got to do this Single window X Y size viewport size. Uh, not resources, it's state dot camera dot begin of one. It's a pointer, so four. that up This stuff, we'll put it here at the very top. That'll just happen every time we're rebuilding a swap chain because of the size of the windows changed. Well, this didn't work. Or is this this is due to loading of something else? I'm sorry, what Okay, maybe I need to take a Okay, this is something else. I'm gonna have to do one thing at a time. So Let's get rid of these other two and just focus on camera for the moment. And the other two we'll just load up manually. Position one is fine. Oh no, 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 no. It's because, would it? 
No, I know what's going on. I didn't set the camera ID. I didn't set these values. That's what's going on. So what realistically should be happening is that I can create them like that and otherwise um, camera ID equals um, T-Simulation set Entity name map dot find camera Scrap these, changing this up to be changing this back to one. We'll just reset, and instead, we're going to change up how we do this. So I can just Okay. Run that, right, this is fine. This is still fine. No, this is not fine. This was terrible. This didn't work at all. Why? Okay, this died because of the photo collision shape nonsense. Which makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, um... This is all we've changed, is this and these items. So what if I reset this? Otherwise it's this camera stuff down below that's the problem. Oh, I think I already see the problem. I'll just double sure, double check. That at least this stuff halfway through the file are fine. Yeah, okay. So the problem was just this. My own failures. Okay, nice.
and I'm going to try to reset to load from the file. I'm going to change this to actually be like turns on and off based on this constant expression variable instead. Make my job just a little bit easier. Oh. We do that, copy the files again. Here to here. State index data that moves up to four. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. Yep. Loading everything from file. No state is hard coded. Please work. Okay, not quite again. Problem. Seg faults. Hmm. This is a uh, not a real thing. Interesting. I do set it, right? I'm going to postulate that I'm not entering the entity names <clears throat> correctly the, into the name map. And that's what's happening here. Because this is, if this is true, it should skip this, right? Yeah, it does that. So, camera ID. It just doesn't even do anything. Camera ID, camera ID is staying at zero. That's staying at zero. That's staying at zero. The P simulation set. Um. Entity name map is just empty. There's nothing in there. Okay, so the problem here is that I'm just I'm just not loading the data. That's my new big problem. So I mean, this was a bad logic issue for sure, but I have a deeper problem. So down to state YAML entity. Uh, when we're reading an entity, we are reading the ID, and we're re we're reading this stuff, and then we there's not even anything for reading the editor name at whatsoever. Cool, cool. So it's part of the state pools, if I recall correctly. For, for now, no, it's not. It is not. So I'm going to have to. Editor name that, yep. Targeted ID group, translator, that. I need the P name, entity name map. If, if I have the name map, then I'm going to actually have to try to read this. So YAML read optional editor name the node which is just the node we're on string okay uh 
Uh, let me just double check that I'm not completely crazy and that the same thing would be happening for resources. Mm. Editor name, yeah. This needs to be both. This doesn't have to, this really shouldn't be down here. Because if this is failing in here, then we've got like a larger problem anyways. And you shouldn't even, like the simulation set is just completely unusable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on that assumption. So if, And then we're basically going to copy that logic here. Editor name map. If we have one. to add more safety around this stuff as well. For example, if this was to fail, I need to actually check that. And I need to actually, like... This is returning a faux ID. This does... Mm, not good. Well, I mean, this is a temporary function anyways. It's not complete yet. Uh, I need to actually deal with this. So I need like the function to take it. in distributed YAML for reading an entity I need, now need to pass in it's only got p-state pools doesn't it it's not part of p-state pools it's part of the other thing so Pass that in, find import state data. This is a higher level function.
that we move up to state import which isn't even here anymore it's libs full imax sitting right about here so this needs to be swapped around for the new position placement Try to compile. Uh, this is actually going to break the test app as well. Um, this here. And then we're also going to have the actual call location, which will be here. Simulation set entity name map. So got that, and then we've got that. Okay, we're back on board. But the data, it's all being imported from that instead of here, right? Yeah. Okay, so, importer state. Something I'm going to have to do. I need to like straighten out my uh, the the names I'm using for things to describe things. State and entity and components are kind of all representing the same thing. We add that. Next, we're here at the application. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do this part. Stage that. Move down a little bit. Move that up around a little bit. Go down the other, the old location here. That just leaves 
Is this stuff okay? Okay, they wait. Actually, I have there's another thing down here somewhere that'll be like about viewport, right? Viewport. Mm hmm. Swap chain. Oh, the, the yeah, the swap chain extent. That makes sense. That's a camera. So we can get rid of that. And we can get rid of this. Like that. We can run it safely. Yes. Moved hard coded entity data. Yes, 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 yes. I like that. So now I'm going to update the actual state data, which is these items like that. This is from the test export. Okay. Link data. Let's move the rolling data stuff around again. And get that kind of fixed up. Where is it? Three bases up to that. Wonderful. So now all the rolling data is at the end. So we were rebase. That will fix that up. Okay, so exporting and importing both work fine using the Basically the same data. Dependencies, there's no dependencies. Resource, state. Uh, 
I need to do that. Just to be the same. Add those for fix up. Push that up. I'll wait a couple minutes, see what that turns out, to make sure it's built on all the platforms, and then I'm going to work on the rest of the data. Because obviously, I have the model file and the image file sitting out in the open. These really should be imported from the actual like uh, data area, I suppose, the state area. Data dependencies, the files, the wherever they're supposed to come from, not from the root directory of the application or from the working directory. So just hold on a moment. Okay, well that was close, but not quite. It looks like we have issues on GCC shared specifically. Um I'm going to guess it's something to do with the V table non V table nonsense. Right. Uh I shared I fixed that on Clang. Adding the MS compatibility, but I guess GCC is not going to be happy about that. Let me uh rebuild this under Yes, let's do CC make uh, dash. equals one. Uh, actually, no, export CC equals GCC first. Examples. Well, I don't even really care about that yet. And then I'll just edit this part out. Well, that's disappointing. It works. Like I am building with, uh, where is it? Compile commands? It's, it's missing now. Okay, uh, these are building with GCC. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. Linking executable test. Okay. LD for flow engine lib. Undefined reference to the V table. on GCC shared. Oh, I'm static. Oh, no. Okay. Let's retry this again. It'll be a little while again. And there's the issue right there. Undefined reference to B table. I Despite the fact I do have the MS compatibility that sufficed for 
clang. And it is building, right? With um Let's see, we've got 3D, so this will be the position. Not quite. Armature, yeah. So obviously, I still really don't want to have to export this stuff. I really don't. Okay, you have to go back onto the uh, onto do a search. Or, or if I just drop this and just kind of fall back to the point to the idea that I just have to export the like the classes themselves, which really is not really not what I want to do at all but it would work so that that this isn't in no this isn't this is the loaders and the pools for the moment Oh, this is nasty. Because if I'm, ex again, like, going back to the thing, if I export the class, it's also going to accidentally export all of this stuff that I really don't want to have to do. It just makes it messy. It exports way more than I need. It's not clean nor elegant. It's a brute force. And I shouldn't have to be brute forcing things to make things work. This would also mean I'd have to do it here. I should now think about it. Yeah. Loader. And, well, actually, I need to. I need that symbol, not the other one. Okay. I'm not trying to do that, I just want to save this file. What's going on? Come on. Application. It's not that hard.
works fine. That is unfortunate. I mean, okay, there is, if I dig deep enough, I've got a libs, resource, and exports. There should be available inside of these, like the no export, which will rehide the other members in the private functions so I can probably okay I'll do this part right now and then I'll see if I can re rehide these items Give that one a go. Um, what? Internet down? Internet is down. Great. Don't know how. And now it's back. Or maybe, yes. Okay, let's see how that's turned out. Okay, wonderful. Uh, pipelines. Didn't quite work. Why exactly? Just Windows Clang CL? Right, Windows MSVC shared is broken for some other reason at the moment. Why exactly? Cannot, can't do DLL import on a DLL import class, so I can't. Okay, so I presume that this is where I'd have to, at this point, instead of doing this, I'd have to do, let me open up the file specifically, can't find it, great, thanks. At the, I'd have to do this specifically, or no, this one, no export. I 
I instead need to do the opposite. Okay, at this point I'm really kind of thinking of, is there another way to go about doing this? Because this is a little silly, a little ridiculous. Exporting and then having to unexport items. I may just kind of want to see if I could try to come up with some... Uh, C style API other than this nonsense I have to do for C plus plus oh, with so many members and functions to have to explicitly not export.
Okay. Um, let's make format these old files and they can all format themselves nicely. Then we build them. Visibility is ignored. Okay, they may be ignored on. Uh, So that's not going to be a, a way to resolve this either. I'm stuck in a bat uh, in a three-way battle on how things are exported, depending on how uh, either MSVC, GCC, or Clang. They're all exhibiting different behavior. I mean, okay, at least this is building. If I was to do this, as is right here. Would it go on? Select that, shift, select that, put them all. Does it at least fix MSVC? That is the question. Okay, let's see how that's turned out. Come on. Come on, Internet, you can do it. Okay, well, it appears to have at least allowed me to get through all the compilers but again I'm pretty sure like it's complaining it's massively complaining on the Linux on the non MSVC compilers about well unexporting stuff right yeah That's really not something I want to have to deal with here. I'm not even going to stash these things. To exporting the full classes. instead
Okay. So that's not really great at all. Okay, now test data. I've been so far, I've been kind of uh, moving this test data around with the uh, this test state data rolling. So I haven't actually been committing FBX and PNG binary files yet. I mean, they're not very big. Like 80 kilobytes. 95 and the PNG is somewhere in here. Another 3.5 kilobytes. Now still, I don't want to set the precedent of having all these binary files in here. Especially since this is just not even real data. This is just test data. I mean, technically the shaders should also be something I move around as well. I need to move the shaders into... Yeah. So this is the point where I need to actually figure out like how am I going to embed non YAML data like images, models, meshes, shaders into in this case the distributed YAML uh, state data collection that is the next part um, okay pause for a drink Okay, so for external data, right now it's just split between shaders and in the root folder. That's not really going to fly in the long run. Um, in the binary form of data, that is, of course, going to be embedded into the binary file. For distributed YAML, what I'm thinking, we have resources, which is just the declarations, the specifications, the definitions of resources. State is the definitions of entity component data. So perhaps if I have an external file or a directory, in this directory, like all the ex uh, data that is brought in from external sources, whether they be image files, model, mesh files, audio files, so that use this as the root directory. And then they can be organized internally however they want. However, a um, creator sees fit rather than trying to limit it into saying like textures must be in textures in an image images must be in an image directory models must be, must be in a models directory it could be organized however they want so things you know like things can be like you know building a everything to do with building a the meshes the door models the textures shaders i don't know can all be put in that folder or you know a folder and subfolders and whatever you know this town this you know this region, you have a top level region directory, then you have a town directory, then under that, and then like a specific building or underground area, resources that are specific to just that. So it's fairly somewhat easy to organize in my mind. That seems fairly reasonable. Yeah, 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 I'll go with that. So, to start with, what I'm going to want to do is I need to end the distributed YAML. Is it even in here or is it still in the 
source directory. It's probably, yeah, it's still down here. So we're going to have to have a new directory. So state. Da, da, da. Actually, distributed YAML generator. What was if it exists? It is a directory. Oh no, it has to exist and be a directory. Ooh, that's kind of awful. Hmm. You want to relook at that in a little while. Um, I'd also actually have to copy this to here. I need a. I need. I would. I will need to be able to kind of put these share them eventually in the future but not quite yet or I should really uh, resolve this right now so if we were given the state data path we need to make sure that the root is a directory that must exist okay there are three things that must exist these three must exist The resource index data, the state index data, and that. State data resource. External data. Okay. So where are we right now? That's closed up. If it exists and is not a directory, Same thing here, and then again there for external. Let me 
actually want to hit directory. Realistically, it should be that way. Since they're both really connected to each other. So we do that. This one is last. So this allows for these to not exist and still be able to go through. Like if we have a Uh, we have data that's only just state data or only resources, but not necessarily all the others as well. Mm -hmm. I can work with that. I can live with that. So right now, actually, if I was to do this, delete that. I shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that. It's very slow. Run that. Oh my god, the visibility stuff. Somebody shoot me over this nonsense. I need to massively reduce the uh, holy crap this is ridiculous I need to reduce the API so I don't have to deal with this uh, eventually Okay, we, we hit up to this point. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we are. We, we're in. Yes, great. Great. I think we all do all that. We're here now. Okay, we have resources directory. This is, yeah. It's fine. It's... Uh, uh, crap. Try this again. Okay, external data directory, it does not exist, we're fine. That does exist and is a directory, so we're fine. Okay. Shift that around to be with the resources. Okay. 
So now at this point, what we're, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find, I need to create a, essentially a path search. That's going to have to go through the, the these resource items, or at least these ones that are compatible, going through them. Yeah. So this is probably going to require a new item. So it would be like find what? Find external file. Okay, yeah. I need to add another thing to IMX. Which is going to be like find external file. It's not going to actually do any processing. It's just going to find the file and return a path if it exists. So importer base. Okay, something like this. Just pilot the resource group. So it'll be, or it'll be, yeah, virtual. So in the case of like the binary importer, external file will just always return nothing because there's no external files for binary types or yeah so equal zero we're going to need to include file system for this one May I also just change it up to be like a C string later, 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 later. Okay, we go down to distributed YAML. Need to add that. And it will be an override. Okay, inside of here, down at the bottom, we'll have, yeah. I guess, We'll have the full path from this location. So I just need to do check first, does the starting directory exist? Or can I just check if the whole thing exists? I can probably just do that. So it'll be rooter slash external file path external directory path external file path otherwise return system path empty can I return an empty? probably succeeds return this entire path to find it come on formatter it's not that hard you just run yeah that you close you're not even actually formatter is not even running disappointing This will also require. Yeah, all those warnings is going to slow down the compilation of this as well, very largely.
What is this? Uh, no wonder it's so bad. All right, I'll just have to deal. Okay, when we're getting resource, I think about it right. What's How do I get this stuff? Hold on. When inside info resource type. Go to source, we go to the this loader, whatever. Is it like a external thing? Create info M import function. Uh, okay. That's why M import function. That's how I disconnected it. Hmm. It's part of the application, maybe. Like how when I we have a bunch of yeah I'm just passing this entire bound function in and then of course this is going back to the thing that I need to yeah standard function function void hmm. that's a, no that's for that this, yeah, there we go, import function. I would need something similar for finding where the external file can, can be found. For the ones that require external data, such as physics doesn't use it yet, but armature loader does. So let's say, yeah, we return standard system path. And what it takes in is a standard file system path. Dot 
that's what we're taking in for the moment. So we have the init import function. that into the armature loader source. So right now it's basing it, it's always based on the root, um, the working directory, which is not what I want for sure. So the import function becomes that. So we'll have standard file system path. Hey cat. There you are. Okay, pause while I deal with the cat. Okay, issue resolved. Um what was I external? Yes. So file path. that with the path which is the initial p create info sorry hold on okay if we do this back to the application then on the, the the initialization of the armature this one we'll have to add a bind for and it's like what it's find external file for the moment it's this realistically it'll have to graduate to a new but later a uh, later 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 and we have all importer placeholders underscore one Come on that, we get rid of that. Give that one a go. Now, hmm. Okay, we need to start here. Why is this not happening? Okay. We're going to have a new location where here, go in here.
not declared in this scope. Really? That's that one. Yeah, that's been definitely declared. In here. Ah. Mm, okay, I need to pass that along, I guess. The loader. Okay, we need to find the main port function process create info. So it says external function. Pass that through. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but I want to make sure that it's at least going to go into this location inside of, okay, let's just close others. I want it to go into here. Okay, I need to make sure it exists and is a regular file. Well, does it have to be a regular file? It could be a symbolic link or something. I don't really want to touch that. I just want to make sure it exists before I even try to open it. If it's anything fancier, then it's not my problem. Not yet. So, if I was to have this and this and this copy them put it into the external like that we come through again We have a path. Okay. That would mean we can take it out of here. We can take both of it. Well, no, not necessarily. We need to do the same thing here. C string for this. We do need it for that though. But if it even 
works because Clang is obviously down right now. It'll probably break on the Windows side, but that's a future concern. Let's check this then. Because this would uh, be looking for both of them. Cube Tower, okay. Sphere Tower, okay. Okay, it's probably just flown past already. So that's a. Uh, that's better. So, back up. I need to do the same thing for the mesh import. Mesh loader. So the image loader. loader there you are you already got that so it's equals that then we're going to have to have in here the thing that's actually going to have to find it first so this is part of that sign I just need to do this here and here as well. Okay. So that's converted this one over. Uh, material. It does not. Mesh does. Shader. Will. So got material loader. To add this here, new function here. Not under material, oh, wrong one.
optional. File system. Here it is. Okay. So first of all, almost. So to required here. Okay, the one eighty eight. One eighty eight where? Image loader 188. Okay, I already moved those. I didn't move the image yet. Although it should be available up there, yeah. I need him there. Come on, let me click it. Okay, you won't. Fine. Mesh material image vertex shader not quite yet collision shape okay Okay, it's gonna succeed. Not quite. Oh, but it may just be from the collision shape bug. Yes, okay. So those are okay. If I test PNG. Images is pulling from the new location. Okay. That leaves shaders. Now. Shader, shader, shader.
Load shader from file. So we need to Okay, let me just close that, restart it so I can add and actually get the clang stuff back. Do I actually from here have yeah, I do have compile commands. There we go. Now things are back. So this is taking the file system path as it is already. So auto file path equals Pass that into here. Now, right now, the shaders are listed as what? Data shaders. Okay, so this is from the root directory, which means if I was to just, let's say, you know, move these into the external directory like that. Then I could just go over this, just say, you know, something like this. Okay. Um, inside of here, mm, I do have, but this does go through all, yeah, all directories from here, so it's not too bad yet. It just leaves us to go back to the application. Add that new function to the shader loader. This one. We've got a bit of a problem here. No rule to make target that. Okay, I may need to need to redo this. So we rebuild shaders the new location, or it looks for the shaders in the new location instead. Okay, please work. Okay, what's happening here? File path is at a new location. That's actually pretty good. 
Okay, 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 it actually has worked. Very nice. That means there's nothing else in the root directory. Go to data. It's just state. Hmm. It's all inside the state um, directory now. I can actually. All right, so put this in place, and then the next part I'm going to have to do for IMAX again is I'm going to have to be able to get from more than one, because this is all trying to grab it from the current importer, and I only have the one. I need to be able to start putting these different resources and entity components into different uh, files and things that it's loading from and that I can properly reconstruct the state from distributed whatever. So, <clears throat> let's put this in as so we can find. So group data to importer base. And these are changed, right? Because, yeah. Find these, whoops. different about this is that um, this doesn't seem right No, this does make sense. The render try does not have anything. Yeah. Don't know why I would have had, thought, thought it would have had something.
Okay. Moving down here. So the importation of the original data set is, of course, still set hard coded. Mm -hmm. Search paths are set right now, it's just data state. Wait, hold on. If it's just. Realistically, shouldn't that work? Go inside of import state. We'll go NP simulation, create importer, state data path. No, it's assuming I actually have the original that I'm looking for. That is not a good idea. I mean, it could be. Maybe, hmm. okay, we'll leave that for the moment. We'll come back to that one day. What I really need to do now is I need to figure out a way to, do I wanna like leave it here in the data area? Do I wanna move it out? want to like move it to test or test export doesn't have copies of the resources so that's fine that'll be hmm Okay, you know what? I've already been two hours on this tonight. I'll leave this as is, and I'll have to think about it more for tomorrow. Cheers.